What does a guerrilla fighter look like? Most, if not all of us, would think that a guerrilla fighter is a big, strong man dressed in uniform. Some would say a guerrilla fighter looks like an ordinary man, ready for combat. In this video, we'll tell you all about what a guerrilla fighter looked like during the Japanese occupation of the Philippines. A beautiful actress, wearing a fake mustache. In the town of Plaridel in Bulacan. A little girl named Januaria Constantino Keller was born on March 3 in the year 1917. She was born to a Filipino mother and a half-Swedish father. At a young age, she knew she wanted to be in the spotlight. And at the age of 19 years old, she was named Queen of Radio because she was known to have a very sweet and gentle voice which she used to sing a lot of mellow songs on the radio. Later on, Januaria would also have a stage name in honor of her hometown Carmen in the municipality of Rosales in Pangasinan. She would come to be known as Carmen Rosales, a familiar name to many of our lolos and lolas. If we asked our grandparents about Carmen Rosales, they would be talking about her acting career. And it's no doubt that Carmen changed the Filipino movie industry as an actress. At the age of 21, she first made her film debut in Mahiwagang Binibini. The film was heavily inspired by the Zarzuela play of Atang de la Rama, a national artist for theater and music, and who is considered by many scholars as the first Filipino actress. And just like any other successful Filipina actress, this would only be the beginning of Carmen's rewarding career in acting. The 1930s in the Philippines was a premier age for Philippine cinema. It was a time of curiosity, discovery, and development of film as a form of art and expression. Films during this age were inspired by local stories and popular theater plays. But as time went on, more Filipino artists and filmmakers began to explore more genres and topics. This also included exploring potential actors and actresses that could act in a multitude of genres. In order to be discovered in the film industry, signing with a film production company is very beneficial, which is why we see actors and actresses today signing and renewing their contracts with big film companies in the Philippines. For Carmen, it was Sapagita Pictures who took her in, and her acting career skyrocketed. Our generation has witnessed or gone crazy over Katniel, Lizken, and Jadine during our early teenage years, and wow was that a time! But we were not the only ones who went crazy over love teams and Wattpad-like romantic comedies. Our lolos and lolas were the first to witness the rise of love teams through Carmen Rosales and Rogelio de la Rosa. Their love team, hashtag Carelio, began in the film Takip Silim. And since its success, they were able to make 12 films together as a love team. And each film where they were starring as lovers gained a lot of success. Now we see why the love team phenomenon has always been successful in Filipino film. But just like most love teams, they were only for the screen. Carmen, outside of the studio, shared true love with her true teammate in life, Ramon Navales. Ramon was a prominent figure in Philippine radio, and they met when they worked together in broadcasting. Their relationship blossomed into marriage and a child named René, and both husband and wife supported each other in each of their careers. But when the 1940s came, things took a turn for the worst. When the Japanese forces began to enter Philippine territory in 1942, Carmen's husband Ramon was killed by the Japanese. This would begin Carmen's activities as a guerrilla fighter. An actress is known to be always ready for the spotlight. Hair is always done right, clothes are never out of style, and makeup is done to face the world. But for Carmen, an actress is also known to adjust to whatever circumstances face her, both on screen and in real life. Following the death of her husband Ramon, Carmen joined the Hukbong Bayan Laban sa Hapon or Huk Malahap, the primary guerrilla movement that worked to fight the Japanese forces that invaded Philippine land. As sharp as she was on the screen, so she was with a gun. During her time in the Hukbalahap, Carmen was stationed in the region of Calabarzon, carrying with her a .415 caliber gun ready to shoot at any Japanese officer who came her way. While doing so, she also disguised herself by wearing a fake mustache in encounters to protect her true identity. She was successful in many attacks on the Japanese, one of which was in Santa Rosa in Laguna where she took part in the mission that killed the Japanese collaborator. But not all attacks were victorious. 
While escaping to Silang in Cavite, Japanese forces found her and threatened to kill the people in her hometown in Pangasinan if she did not act in a Japanese propaganda film. To save the people in her hometown, she reluctantly agreed and starred in the said film Tatlong Maria in 1944, along with Norma Blancaflor, Liway Wayarseo, Fernando Po, Jose Padilla Jr., and Eli Ramos. It was for these reasons that the barrio in Rosales was named after her. If it weren't for her heroism and courage, more people would have lost their lives under the brutality of the Japanese forces. Her efforts would prove to be worth it as the Japanese surrendered in World War II and finally left the Philippines in 1945. Her memories of her time as a guerrilla fighter were immortalized as Sampaguita Pictures dedicated a film to her wartime memories in the film Guerrilla, where she also acted in just one year after the war ended. At the time, the Philippine film industry started creating films that dove into wartime discourse and critique on the perils of war. A reminder to the Filipino people about history and memorialization in art and film, Carmen would act again. Her days of acting were soon from over, but things have certainly changed after the war. She was offered a large sum of money to team up again with her former partner, Rogelia de la Rosa, in Campanang Ginto and became the highest paid actress in the Philippines. In time, she found love again in Jose Puyat, and together, they bore a child named Cesar. The 1950s in the Philippines is considered by many to be the golden age of Philippine cinema as the country averaged 350 films released in a year, coming in second place with the most amount of film productions in Asia. Most of Carmen's memorable films were created and released during this time, such as her role as the lover of Rogelio de la Rosa in Maalala Mo Kaya in 1954, Ang Tanging Kung Pag-ibig in 1955, MN in 1954, and Inspiration in 1954, where she won as Best Actress in the Philippine Academy of Movie Arts and Sciences, or FAMAS, awards. The same distinction given to actresses like Charito Solis, Nora Honor, and Vilma Santos in the coming years. She was known to be assertive and of high standards as told by her colleagues in acting. Gloria Romero, another famous Filipina actress, recalled being intimidated by Carmen when she first worked with her. Most film workers remember her for her strong sense of professionalism, as she was never late to call times, and she always knew her lines by heart and delivered them with grace. Her devotion to acting reflected her devotion to her family and her country. And for that, Carmen is not just an actress, but a hero to many Filipinos. Her legacy would pass on even after her death in 1991. Carmen Rosales is living proof of how Filipinas have struggled to go beyond the boundaries of tradition and fight for meaningful participation and radical inclusion throughout Philippine history. How about you? Do you know any Filipina actresses today who are also active participants in social and political activities? Let us know who you think resembles Carmen Rosales of our generation of actresses today in the comment section down below. Like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you'd like to learn more with us. Thanks for watching.